please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. There are issues relating to tax. What happens, as I said, in India, the law is very clear. We fortunately don't have any estate duty anymore. Whatever any person here in India gets money, inherits, there is no tax on that. Fortunately, you know, during the lifetime gift, you need a relative. But let me point out, not everybody is aware about this. If you are to receive money from somebody who is not a relative, if you do it under inheritance or succession, under a will, you may get n amount of crores, but you will not pay a penny of tax either in India and majority of the home countries, in fact, I know, I have hardly come across countries where if you are receiving gifts or you are receiving inheritances, if you can legitimately prove them to be so, you know, they will charge any tax. In India, when you are giving away, there is no tax. And as I mentioned, fortunately, there is no rider, while for a gift, it has to be a resident relative if the gift is going outside India. As far as uh, inheritance or succession is concerned, there is no such embargo or restriction. So that makes the succession planning, you know, even more practical, feasible and sensible. So you have to sit down and let me tell you the succession planning and that is why, you know, I, I had requested Kota that this webinar is not just meant for NRIs alone. It is meant for their relatives as well in India. Because relatives in India, let me tell you, those, and, 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 and let me tell you, Manish, there are in India, you know, now there is such a great awareness. And in fact, I am, I am extremely happy to have passionately championed that cause over so many years. We have so many NRI associations of relatives, you know, and they frequently get together and they enlighten and sensitize, you know, the parents, the elderly people within their families about these regulations. Because many a times the NRIs themselves are so busy, they don't have the time. So it is their relatives here, their close kit and kin, who can do a lot of planning for them. There is no rigid law. You can have what we call as the composite will. You can have standalone wills. So you have to take a call. Now the question is, when I look at it, you know, I ask myself, why would I want to present a will for my Indian properties before the Indian revenue authorities, banks, other tax authorities where I am required to present a will for my Indian properties as to what I am having in the US and what I have done to that. You know, it can only, as I said, you know, not work that practical or pragmatic. On the contrary, you know, the guys here may think, oh, here is a fellow, you know, who's having a juicy, meaty stuff there. You know, we can make him run around and try to extract some. So I would say, why would you want to do that? Unless there are good reasons. I generally advise standalone wills, unless in exceptional circumstances, composite wills also can be helpful. So keep a will for your home country, which takes care of those assets. In fact, there are separate regulations also. In the US, your, for your US property, your personal law will not apply. It will be the law in the US, you know, which will take care of that situation. So it's better to have a separate will for your home country and a standalone will here. But as I said, keep this in mind. And while I am on this, let me give you something which can be a million dollar tip or advice. I know of situations where people, they are leaving behind 
say 20 crores worth of assets and there is a family where there are four members what happens if that 20 crores is left to one individual under the one million dollar rule how many years will that guy take to take this overseas say around three years if you are smart enough of course socially the circumstances permitting if you had had four beneficiaries you know who could be holding these nre nro accounts and uh, do all the repatriation etc it would all go off in one go so these smaller aspects you have to keep in mind you have to also keep in mind as i said that getting the legacy there is no tax but when you are to repatriate the sale proceeds the regulations will apply and then you will need to understand i would just make uh, i'll take half a minute to make a very interesting observation particularly for a country like us or australia one year and one west and east in both these countries the law regarding the capital gains where there is also concessional tax rate is if somebody acquires an immobile property under a will you know the value of that is taken as on the day he receives it so when the person passes away in india the law is very much otherwise here it is from the date of acquisition of the previous owner and then you do the indexation etc in these countries there is no indexation but there is a big comfort you know the step up valuation is you know your father may have acquired this in the year 1970 but if he passes away in 2020 for 70 to 20 50 years whatever is the increase in valuation you are not going to pay any tax on that as far as that overseas jurisdiction is concerned but in india you will have to do the 2001 valuation indexation etc and then you try to decide what is more beneficial as i said you'll have to bring in the gifts versus gains you'll have to harmonize what we call as your one million dollar rule along with lrs rely on your relatives here to send you some gifts which are otherwise tax-free so you know there are n number of combos you know which you can uh, take as you go to watch a movie you know popcorn and uh, coke or samosa and coke and uh, sprite and uh, something sandwich so you know what is best suitable to you go ahead for that let me tell you the income tax law here in india is very clear on two aspects one is when you are bringing in remittances you know all that you need to be able to show is that this has come through the banking channel and it is even banks now who want to ensure their clean funds beyond that no questions are asked in the nature of a roving inquiry unless and until they have definite information that it is money laundering and if it is money laundering you had it you know. so so if it is coming from genuine sources from outside no problems when you are in nri here you have the full protection you know as an nri your privilege is a resident indian and therefore i always advise shantanu what people are doing is they file returns wrongly as tax residents though they are a non-resident for n number of years they say our amara tax consultant karta hai but hota kya hai because of you know if you are filing a return as a resident the law requires that you declare all your assets outside and all your income outside so you are what you are doing you are approbating and reprobating by making a wrong declaration you know of course finally if suppose there is something against you you can say well it was a mistake of my consultant and you know he showed it erroneously but it cannot be that easy so i would advise everybody please show your correct tax status and if you are a non-resident 
you don't have to show your income outside india you don't have to show your assets outside india it's only after you become a resident a returning indian then there are so many obligations that you have to fulfill even if you have zero income in india you have to still file an itr even if you have 100 dollars in an account outside india keep that in mind the law is in fact uh, if you go strictly the law even grants a privilege to non residents not to have a pan a permanent account number but then it is an irony in the sense you would need a permanent account number if you know you are wanting to do so many transactions and everywhere you just cannot go on flashing your nri status and therefore we say there was a time when people did not get pan but now practically all nri is have pan they even have aadhar because aadhar regulations have liberalized as you know so answering your question if you have only nri account interest and nothing else certainly you need not file itr you are not under obligation but nobody will prevent you also my only suggestion is there are nris who file their returns in india as nris but what they do is they under the schedule ei what we call as schedule of exempt income they do not show their nri account balances so if you are not filing your return because you are not having the gross total income beyond the uh, taxable limit no problem but if you are filing a return as a non resident please do not file a half hearted return do declare your exempt income because what may happen tomorrow out of your nri account you may make some investment in shares in and then you earn dividends you earn capital gains now they are taxable so what happens is your eis will reflect your investments and income but if you are not able to show the nexus linked with your exempt investments and the income nre income or fcnr income exempted out of it then so i would say legally not required practically worth considering and advisable but never for sure half hearted because otherwise you know it will go against you you cannot back out and say that well i did not show this in my tax return but i am claiming that this was a source of my investment and you know the law is so stringent if you are not able to explain any source of investment that you have made in india you could land up in a 83% effective tax burden that's that's really killing as far as nre is concerned you know the the exemption criteria is linked with your nri status non resident status under fema and let me tell you even i have seen cases where people come to india and they get stuck up here for a couple of years maybe covid maybe other reasons socially uh, health reasons or whatever uh, they need not worry as far as their nr as long as their intention is to stay outside india and not have you know any settlement or source of uh, you know uh, major income here in terms of active income you are safe even in fcnr interest you have the shelter of what i said is r but nor so you know if you go into these finer aspects i think uh, you do not have as many causes of concern you have to just do some thinking out of the box under the indian laws you know when we talk of nri uh, it is it is a colloquial term but it covers not just indian nationals it covers even foreign nationals of indian origin and to you can say three generations so not only you and your children but even your grandchildren you know since if you are born in india so they could they could be covered under what we call as pio and uh, now under the oci regulations the overseas citizen of india you know which gives you all the privileges to make investments in india in not only bank accounts practically everything that even uh, uh, 
resident Indians, except in agricultural land, you know, I think the doors for NRI investments are open on all fronts. So uh, I would say, Ankit, that uh, there is there is no restriction or embargo. But just keep in mind that when you are looking at investments in India, think of the reciprocal tax implications in your home country also. And as I said, the best thing to do is to balance it in a manner that, of course, uh, you know, one of the best things you could do is uh, in the name of those minor kids, you could keep some growth oriented instruments. I think, uh, you know, you have so many uh, wealth companies, including Kotak. Kotak has a wealth division too, Manish, right? You could uh, guide and advise, you know, these kind of cases where, you know, it's uh, a win-win situation. Uh, uh, you do the tax planning and you also do investment planning. And that's the perfect thing. You know, I try to encourage, you know, all my uh, NRI friends that because of this $1 million per year kind of a regulation which is there in terms of VPAT, you know, what you should be actually doing is every year, Try to, you know, your Indian assets, which may have been in the NRO basket, try to, you know, convert them, uh, take them into the NRE arena and uh, a forex asset, not necessarily a fixed deposit itself. Even if a forex asset you have invested in any other, say like shares, mutual funds, etc. If the investment was made out of your NRE account on their disposition, you can once again park them into this and therefore there are there are NRIs which I have seen you know who over the years you know they have uh, built up fortunes into their uh, NRE convertible foreign exchange baskets by very strategic planning you know uh, through uh, various measures. So sky is the limit for planning Ankit.